So here I want to look at an addition reaction. We're going to take a, a, a halogen acid and we're going to we're going to add that to an alkene. Uh, and, and what ends up happening if the alkene is asymmetrical is that we have two different options of what we might see, and and we always see the same thing. Okay. And, and there's, there's a few exceptions we'll see to that maybe later on in organic chemistry. But for now, we're going to start with the simple one. This is called Markovnikov's rule. And basically, it gives us an insight into what the mechanism is. Okay? And so what we'll find is, is that if we take, you know, here I have propene and hydrobromic acid, that I will always end up with the following. I'll always end up with the bromine attached here, and the hydrogen attached to the terminal carbon. Okay. Now, if you think about this, a lot of this intuitively makes sense that the HBr is added where the hydrogen goes to one and the bromine goes to the other. But why does the bromine always go to the middle? It's kind of the question. What's happening that's making it where it never goes to the terminal, terminal carbon? And the answer is, is that the, if you think about this for a second here, we have this acid. Well, that's, that's a strong acid. That's going to be you know, ionized. It's, it's going to have a free H plus somewhere in solution. And the H plus initiates the reaction. Okay. And so what happens here, if we can demonstrate with this bottom reaction here, is that the H plus from this, let's split this up. So here's our H plus, and here's our Cl minus. The H plus is going to form a bond with that double bond, with the alkene. So now the question then is, well, where would you rather have that hydrogen ion? Would you rather have it here, or would you rather have it there? So let's look at the two results you can get there. So we have CH3 to CH to CH2. And then we'll do it again, CH3 to CH to CH2. Now, if I have the hydrogen here, that puts a positive charge there. So there's our carbocation intermediate. If I put the hydrogen here, that puts the positive charge on this carbon. So what we're seeing from the result here is that this is the one that always wins. This one, no. And why? Well, having the carbocation on that central carbon, uh, which is a secondary carbon as opposed to a primary carbon, is beneficial because it's not, it's not good to have a positive charge on a, on a carbon atom. Carbon has a lot of protons available and it's going to attract electrons to it. The reason why it's better to have it here is because this has a carbon atom adjacent to it and another carbon adjacent to it that it can pull on electrons from. Whereas this one only has the one adjacent to it, and so it can't pull on its electrons as many. So that means that this is less likely to occur, this is less stable, and this is more stable. And so from there, well, what's happening next is now the chloride's going to come in. So in this one, the chloride is going to quickly come in and, and form a bond with that central carbon. And the same thing would have happened here. but we never form this. And so, because of the fact that the H plus forms the bond with the uh, double bond with, this, with the pi bond and the alkene first, that dictates how we're going to end up with our products. And so, if we were to create another asymmetrical alkene, if we were to do something like CH3, CH2, CH2, uh, carbon, double bond carbon, we have hydrogen, and let's do CH2 there. So if we were to take something like this, and then we were going to mix it with HBr, the expectation is that you would then know where to put the bromine and where to put the hydrogen in the product. Okay, so if we put the H plus on first, we can put it here, which would give us a carbocation on this carbon. Or we could put it here, which would give us a carbocation in this one. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see that it's going to occur where the carbocation forms on the carbon that's surrounded by more carbon atoms. So our final result for this is that we would have CH3, CH2, CH2, and then the 
bromine is going to end up here. And the hydrogen is going to end up there because this is where we're going to have formed our carbocation. Okay, so that's how Markovnikov's rule works. It's pretty simple. Um, and that's kind of the insights from the mechanism that we see.